So what have we got for you today? Well, the mirror has splashed on the fact that a couple of high profile Tories have backed the nurses strike. More on that a bit later. But first, I want to take you to page six, where the first black woman in Parliament, Diane Abbott, has been suspended from the Labour Party after writing a letter about racism and then saying she didn't mean any of it. Now, Jason, can you take us through this? Diane Abbott has has battled and been a victim of racism all her life. So what's she done here? So she she wrote a letter to the Observer, which rather embarrassing for the Observer, they seem to have missed the news story themselves. Um, uh, about an article written by somebody else, which was, about, which was kind of saying that racism comes in many different forms, and and very cack handedly and ill judged, Diane Abbott try. I'm, I'm trying to be kind to her here. Tried to make the point that yes, there, there there are various forms of racism, but actually comparing the kind of the abuse suffered by she took example of of, of, of redheads, travellers, yeah. and then very unfortunately. Um, Jewish people said was not comparable to the suffering of, of, of the, the, the black people um, from, for, from and the historic legacy of, of slavery. I think I know what she was on about, but, but you know, there is a, a difficulty in drawing a comparison, let's say, between being a redhead, but, and as a father of two redheads, I am sympathetic to her cause, um, but putting in kind of the Jewish people and kind of ignoring the, the historic anti-Semitism over many, many centuries, and most obviously, but, but the kind of, you know, but the horrific persecution by the Nazis and the, the six million people who died in the Holocaust, what was very badly judged and offensive. And there's no excuse for this. And I mean, she accepts that um, and has apologised. I mean, her excuse that it was a draft letter, I'm not entirely convinced about, but maybe that did happen. Um, but as you say, there's, there's a sadness here. And the sadness here is is... Diane Abbott has probably suffered more racial, racist and kind of misogynistic abuse than any other MP. I mean, if you ever look at the comments on her Twitter feed, they're absolutely abhorrent. And, and this is what makes it so difficult is that, and, and rather a bitter irony, is that the, the person who, who has faced more hatred and abuse than anybody else failed to understand that her... language yeah I, th- I i didn't hear all of that i'm not sure if it's your um your signal or mine jason well, it's a little bit of silence at the end susie for some reason yeah maybe it's um my new auto cue software which isn't working very well <laughs> who knows but uh um i think we got your point anyway she's suffered a lot of racism and she doesn't seem to have quite grasped the different nuances of, of different mm. groups of people who have different experiences. And, it, you know, she did point out in this letter that, you know, there were no people who seemed to be white, i.e. Jewish people or travellers on the slave ships. And so therefore it wasn't the same kind of experience. Um, it doesn't really quite, it's not really what com- comparator, is it? Is this, yeah. a, do you think this is a reasonable reaction from the Labour Party. What do you think, viewers? Do you think this is the right thing to have done, to have suspended Diane for having said this? I mean, she's apologised extremely quickly. If you want to compare it to Jeremy Corbyn and how long it took him to not apologise, she's done amazingly well to to turn it back straight away, immediately reverse the ferret. But it doesn't seem to have worked with Keir Starman. Now, Lazy says, the Labour leadership have acted swiftly. Diane has at least apologised. It's quite a contrast when compared to the dim dom debacle of the past uh, week or so of course referring to Dominic Raab's bullying thing but Jason is it reasonable because I mean someone's not towed the line all right they've, they've made the party look bad so we need to dissociate ourselves from it and suspend her from their point of view but from the other hand does it just you know reignite all those headlines all the division we've had about the Labour Party and anti-Semitism over years about the Corbyn era bring all this back into our lives again I mean much rather it wasn't would Starmer conceivably have been better off just ignoring it and letting the apology be the apology I, unfortunately I don't think he could ignore it I, I mean even though she had apologized that you know you you, you can't given Labour's historic problems of anti-Semitism and Starmer's pledge on his first day as leader to, 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 to root out that poison from the party, 
if he if he just stood by, then it he would have become under a lot of attack, and it would have been seen as kind of a a, a weakness on his behalf, and and that would have reignited the whole issue. I mean, I, I think some of the right wing papers here are going, you know, Labour is is you know once again embroiled in anti semitism rows are slightly unfair. It's it, it one MP. I mean, you can't, you know, tarnish a whole party because of the actions of one one MP who's made a mistake um, and has used, you know, unacceptable formulation of language. Um, mm. And but it's in the right's interest to, to, mm. to stir that up, um, and I can see why they're doing it. I, I think it's slightly unfair. I mean, the the bit I find difficult here is that Diane is an awkward person. I I know her quite well. She's a funny fish, isn't she? She's a funny. She is. She's quite shy. I don't think people get this. And she's not as confident as you, you'd sometimes imagine. And and sometimes, you know, she's she's you've got to admire a lot for what she did. As you said, you know, the first black woman in parliament overcoming incredible kind of prejudice um, has kind of um, been a kind of amazing trailblazer in many, many ways. You know, risen kind of you know to 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 shadow cabinet level. But there's so much to admire about Diane. But also, you know, she's her worst own worst enemy, and always has been. You know, but she's kind of charges of hypocrisy have been placed against her. Where you know she kind of um, she's always been on the left of a party, which is fine because you know there's there's space in the party for people with those views. But she's kind of she's also kind of supported causes which are sometimes quite difficult to justify. I, and she you know. She, People are people are complicated, and Diane is a co- complicated person. And sometimes I think you, there needs to be a bit of nuance here and a little bit of understanding. But 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 you know, uh, trying to just kind of like kind of, I I feel this applies to all politicians, but but particularly in this case. But you know, if you try and just kind of say they are just one simple thing mm. and pigeonhole mm. them like that, is is to do a kind of um, a disservice to somebody who's actually a very complicated character and, and and with complicated characters come all different shades and all different opinions mm. Mm. exactly and, and someone who could achieve all the things that she had done in the in the wake of in the face of all that objection and prejudice is is going to be unusual should we say uh to start with in, yeah. in the way that they deal with some of the word as an awful lot of trailblazers will have been. Now, Tim says it's completely lazy, it just has the same label being held around, and it does a huge injustice to real anti-Semitism. Gwyneth says she should resign because her views are opposite to what the Labour Party now stands for. She's toxic. Um, it's got to be remarked upon, hasn't it, Jason, that even the hard left, the Corbynistas, the the, the people who would have who, who made such a fuss about anti-Semitism in the party over the past few years, they aren't mm. defending this. They're not coming out, at least they weren't when I came on air here. They, they're not coming out and saying, God save Diane. You know, uh, I think the founder of Momentum uh, has said something, but, you know, Corbyn himself even, they've all been fairly quiet, really, and they've said that it's fairly indefensible. Is it possible, do you think, that Momentum and the, the activists on that side of the party have realised that their, their front-facing you know, people, their leaders, are being slowly ejected by Starmer, that this kind of thing gives them exactly the gunpowder that that side of the other side of the party needs to clear it out? It might be wise, perhaps, to keep a low profile for a bit, you know, just, just wind it in slightly rather than cause the big fuss and noise they have done over the past few This is really fascinating, something you've picked on here. So so if you talk to those on, on the left of the party, but what, you know, what they is they call the campaign group, but it's kind of, you know, a, 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 a hardcore of, of, of holders of, a, of the Jeremy Corden kind of torch, so to speak, um, that they are um, very fearful at the moment that, 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 that the leadership is looking for any excuse to drive them out of the party. Um, and they say they like, accuse kind of Starmer's team of almost setting traps of them to, to, to find a way, a mechanism to get, get them out. Um, so um, they are c- keeping a low profile precisely because of this, um, because they, they fear that um, if they are driven out, then they lose all influence on what mm. happened um, um, if Labour was to win the next general election. So but perhaps what's fascinating them. here 
is one of the reasons they're keeping a low profile is if it's a hung parliament, then they suddenly have leverage because Corbyn or even if Corbyn has a small majority, they have leverage because Corbyn mm -hmm. won't be able to get any legislation through without having the whole support of all the MPs. So suddenly you get a handful of MPs. You don't need three or four who could completely change the terms of debate because they're saying, mm -hmm. we're not going to support you, you'll get your legislation through. Maybe you're going to listen to us. So they are in some ways playing a, a, a long game here. And, and it partly explains why you're not seeing them running to the barricades in support of Corbyn and, and, and Diane Abbott. All right. So they're taking the long term view to wind their necks in a little bit publicly now, wait till Labour comes into power and then perhaps start, you know, using the, the back corridors of power, as it were, to, to exert influence over the next Labour government. Uh, Tim says there's certainly a purge yeah. happening at the moment. The silence is not surprising. It's fear. From what Jason just said, Tim, it's, it's not fear, it's long-termism. Uh, Michael says, left-wingers are held to a higher standard. If it was a right-wing, centrist MP with an apology, it would have been forgotten about. If it was a Tory that had written something like this, um, if it was one of Starmer's sort of side of the party who had written something like this and there was a very quick apology, has Michael got a point? Would that have been allowed to slide? Or is Diane, is this the excuse they wanted to suspend Diane? Sorry, Jason. Uh, I, I think this is always the case. The left are always held. <laughs> we're, we're struggling a bit here, Susie, aren't we? Yeah, it's your That's Wi-Fi, I think. Can you um, hear me? I, we can hear you, don't worry, but we've got your mid cup of tea there, mid swig. Um, do you think this is... Oh, uh, no, do you think what Michael's point there... Yeah, I, I think this is... I think he's got a very good point. I, I, the left is always held to a higher standard. Um, and in some ways you could... Uh, should be because you know the, the values matter to them but it also it's a case of you know the hypocrisy of having a, a kind of you know a predominantly right-wing press which is always going to gun for labor and always pick on even the slightest kind of miss medina or lapse i'm not saying diane abbott's was a slight miss to me and i'm just saying that's what they would do and, and as mm. such labor has to has to you know will always come under more criticism and they have to kind of, you know, but, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I, I think less should be held to a higher standard of account. <laughs> it's, it's good. It, it shows their values are stronger. Because you, because you, all oh right, because you, you think the the right has is not going to stand up to quite the same amount of scrutiny. No. Yeah. Well, we should. We should. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see how things turn out for Diane, won't we? And whether that apology actually turns out to be enough in the long run. Now, uh, now I need to go on to the big story of the day. Uh, keep asking us your questions about Diane Abbott, everybody. What do you think about her suspension? Do you think she she think she had a point in her letter, or do you think she should just have the benefit of the doubt? It was an early draft that got sent in that shouldn't have got sent in. Whoops, a daisy, um, and she's apologised very quickly. What more could anybody do with it in the absence of a time machine?